Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Arkham City Solomon Grundy. This is the wave you have to get to build Solomon Grundy, consisting of Batman, Catwoman, Rachel Ghoul, and Penguin. If you get all four of these figures, you can collect to build Solomon Grundy. I'm really excited for this wave, as I'm a huge fan of the Arkham franchise, and I'm a huge Batman fan and collector. I picked up these figures at Target today, and there's a pretty annoying story behind this. I'll share that with you after we check out these packaging. So, we'll take a look at one of them real quick. They're all pretty similar. 22 moving parts, McFarland Toys, H12+, plus, DC Multiverse, this is Batman, Collector Build Solomon Grundy, the first of four figures. You can see all the parts in there. Batman has Grundy's legs, Catwoman has the torso, Rachel Ghoul has his arms, and then Penguin has the head and jacket. Here's a look at the back of the packaging. Let's check one out. This is Batman's package. Here's Solomon Grundy. Here are the parts you get with this figure, a checklist with all the parts, and the rest of the wave. Like I said, very excited for this wave, although I think Grundy's going to be far smaller than he should be. So with no further ado, let's open him up. But before we do that, let me tell you a story about these figures and my experience at Target today. And I did pick up the entire wave at Target today, and there is quite a story behind this. I'm sure all of you guys out there will appreciate the story. So when I went to the first Target, they didn't have anything, had them punch in the number, and they told me two other Target stores in the nearby area that had six. I knew that's a full case, being the entire wave and a couple of doubles. One of the Targets is about an hour away, and one was only about 10 or 15 minutes away. But before I went to that Target, I decided to give them a call, asked for a guy in the electronics section, had him punch in the DCPI, he said they had six, and he asked me which one I wanted. I said, well, there are four different characters in the assortment, I would like to get all four. He said he could only sell me one since the number shared between the entire wave. I was just like, what? What do you mean? I absolutely hate this particular Target store. They have this rule that they've completely made up, saying they can only sell one item per collector per day. And if you guys know my channel, I like to get one of my Batman figures to open, I want to keep an open in my complete Batman related unopened action figure collection. But I knew that was going to happen here, so I didn't even push that issue. I just want to get one of each of the characters. So I called there. He verified he had them, but he said that he could only sell me one. And I said, well, they're different characters. It's not the same figure. So he didn't really say much. I drove up there 15 minutes away. Not a big deal. When I got there, I saw the guy talk to him on the phone. I said, hey, I called you on the phone. He said, okay, cool. Which one do you want? I said, well, I'd like to get all four of them. He said, I can only sell you one. I said, what? That doesn't make sense. You said it's a limit of one item per customer per day. These are four different items. He said, well, the number is shared between the entire wave, so I'm only allowed to sell you one. I said, that's not a policy. You're literally making this up right now. And honestly, he wasn't making that up, but that's a policy that he was told their store does. And I can kind of understand they don't really want to support scalpers. They don't want someone to come buy six of the same figure and then go sell them online. And that's not what I'm trying to do. I wasn't even trying to get two of them, which I would have liked. So he said he would go ask his manager. He went to the back, came back a few minutes later and said, Oh, my manager said, you can only have one of them since the number's shared. I was like, what? You really won't sell me four different action figures that you have right now? So I asked for the manager. He went out, got the manager, manager came out smiling, pretty nice. I said, so, hey, I'm here to purchase these four items you have in the back. I know you do, guy confirmed this, but he said you can only sell me one. The guy said, yes, that's correct. The number is shared between Tire Wave. We can only sell you one of those things today. If you want to come back tomorrow, you can get another one. Come back the next day, get another one. Come back the next day, get I'm like, what, are you kidding me? I said, I understand if you're trying to limit me one item, that's fine, per character. But these are four different characters. They have different UPC numbers. The DCPI, which is a target internal number to represent the UPC number, is shared between the wave because that's just the way that works. He said, yeah, I'm so sorry, but since it's shared, I can only give you one. And I'm just like looking at him like, what? Kept my cool, didn't argue, didn't raise my voice. I simply explained, hey, I want to be able to build this character. He said, oh, is it one that has the arms and legs? Yeah, sure is. He said, oh, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll compromise, I'll sell you two. And then you can come back to market the other two. I'm like, why would you make me do that? I said, if you're not going to sell these to me, I'm going to have to drive 
45 minutes away to go to this other target, and I really don't want to do that. Do you really want to make me do that? And he's like, not really. So I kept pleading my case, pleading my case, being cool about it, explained to him, I'm not aggressive, but I am very passionate, but I want these figures. Eventually I did win. He said he would sell me all four. He said he'd follow up with a policy. And I told him, pretty sure that policy is an old wives' tale. It's something that's made up and definitely not an official target policy. I do get some of these stores vary from store to store. They have their own rules. Maybe there's a bunch of aggressive collectors that come there, won't take no for an answer. And maybe that's what I am. And I told him all that stuff. So I did get my four figures. But I was very displeased to have to sit there for 25, 30 minutes just to plead my case, just to get the whole wave so I could have it all at once. What do you guys think? Was I being a jerk? Because I damn sure know I wasn't. Is that Target's policy? Hell no, that is not Target's policy. Only this particular Target always gives me this problem. And this happens to be the Target that always gets the figures first. So, with no further ado, let's open them up. All right. Now they got these figures out of the package. Here they all are with their Grundy pieces. Batman has Grundy's legs. Catwoman his torso. Rachel Gould's two arms. And then Penguin, his head and jacket. So let's get Grundy assembled. See how impressive and big he is. Or how disappointing and small he is. We'll start off with Batman and his legs. So here's the Arkham City Batman. He comes with Solomon Grundy's legs. Then we have Catwoman. She comes with Grundy's torso. And I will comment, that thing is so light. Feels totally hollow. Not the sturdy, heavy Grundy I was expecting. Add Grundy's legs to the torso. And he's starting to take form. A lot smaller than I expected, although I've seen pictures online. Looks to be about half the size he should be in the game. Then we have Rachel Ghoul. He comes with Grundy's arms. And here's Grundy with the arms attached. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but I'm definitely a little bit disappointed with how it's coming out. And then finally, here's the Penguin, who also looks awesome. He comes with Grundy's jacket and head. And then... Adding in the head and the jacket, here's Grundy fully assembled. Now, the jacket makes it look a lot better. That comment about being disappointed before was due to the arms, the way they connected. It looked really weird around the shoulders. They don't have that typical butterfly joint thing they have, so there was a noticeable gap. But once you add the jacket, that's gone. Now, my initial reactions with Grundy... Well, he looks good, not great, but damn is he undersized. Grundy literally should be twice as big, if not bigger than that, compared to this figure. This figure is maybe 8 inches tall, and we will measure him later in the video. Initial reactions, big disappointment with his height if you want him for an Arkham City Grundy. But on the other hand, if you want to use him as sort of fill-in for your comic Grundy, he's probably right around the right size. Just depends when you want. I've definitely seen a lot of feedback online, some people that are very pleased with how small he is. He might be the smallest Build-A-Figure, probably about the size, at least the height of Dark Father. Initial thoughts? Disappointing. But take a step back and think, this wave's $100, it breaks it down to $20 a figure if you, if you count Solomon Grundy. The DC Direct one was considerably more expensive. So you know, take the price, take the value. Still I think he could have been bigger. At least another inch or so. Yeah, that's what she said. So let's take a look at him. Starting with his head here. We got that zombie, Solomon Grundy. Mouth sort of open. You can see his teeth exposed. He's kind of angry. Eyes. I guess they're sort of yellow. Very dark around the edges. His hair. Gray. You know, kind of messy. A little bit spiked. He's got that sort of cutout on his chest where it's stitched. Batman sort of ripped his heart out. Sort of peel that back and see there. It's one solid piece here. There's no ball joint in his torso. Now his clothing. Texturing is very nice. Very, very well done. Superb sculpt. Ripped on the shoulders. He's got large muscular build. Some Frankenstein-esque stitching around here. Single jointed elbow, chains, yeah, they look pretty basic. This rope doesn't even look that good. 
I'm just so used to the DC Direct one, whose sculpt and paint were exquisite. Going further down, he's got rips in his pants, single jointed knee, more of those sort of Frankenstein type stitching. Good looking figure, depending on what you're going for with him, but he is way underscaled to be what he actually is an Arkham City Grundy. And just a closer look at his face and head sculpt. I mean, it does not look bad. It looks really good right now. But as I just recall, the DC Direct one is a little better. We will compare them in this video. Don't worry. Here's a closer image of Grundy with his jacket on. And here he is without the jacket. So you have a couple different display options for him. Obviously, he looks a lot better with the jacket on. With the jacket off, I don't really like the way the shoulders look. There's a big gap there. If you had one of those sort of circular butterfly joint things, it would help a little bit. But it is not designed to be displayed this way. Now as a whole, Grundy feels a little bit cheap, especially his torso area. Just very hollow. You got a lot of weight to the figure. His legs are pretty heavy. But his torso, just hollow. Feels kind of like Clayface, maybe even a little worse, if you know what I mean. That's a little disappointing, as I just really expect him to be thick, sturdy, strong, heavy. Now they're taking a pretty good look at the assembly, the figure, and his lack of accessories. Now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, he's standing at about 8.2 inches tall, which is going to translate to about 21 centimeters. And I'll tell you, he is far, far too short compared to the source material. And in case you were curious how much larger Grundy is than a typical McFarland DC Multiverse figure, less than an inch and a half bigger, he is far too small. Will work good to fudge into your comic displays, but is way off for an Arkham City. Now let's check out his articulation. Start with his head here. Of course, going to rotate from side to side. Look up and down about that much. Tilt his head just a little bit from side to side. Shoulders on a ball joint. It does pop out pretty easily when you really, really push it. Pop back in there, no problem. Has this kind of bad looking cap down there. He doesn't have that usual circular butterfly joint thing, but that's what the jacket's for to cover that up. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. Like I said, you really push on it, it comes out. It's not easy to get it out, don't get me wrong, it's not like Bane. All the pieces stay in just fine. No issue with the legs or the arms. Only when you completely push it to capacity. Elbows, about a 90 degree bend with rotation. His wrists rotate and it's hinged as well. Torso is one solid piece. Ball joint the waist, rotate around, forward and back. Legs, pretty much does splits, not fully. Not a ball joint, but he's a similar type idea. Go forward, really not too much. Back, not at all. Single joint to knees, no rotation. Then his ankle here, forward and back. Tilt rock, toe articulation. Here's Grundy in another setting, sort of a castle or dungeon type setting. Very appropriate for Grundy. Here's Solomon Grundy, chained up on a wall. He's held there below the penguin's base in the Museum of Gotham. Here's Penguin approaching his new prized possession. He inherited this giant zombie monster with his property of the museum. Penguin keeps jabbing Grundy with his umbrella. He's trying to piss him off, keep him angry, keep him brutal and ruthless. Later on, during the events of the game, Batman ends up falling through the ceiling. He lands next to Solomon Grundy and is shocked at what he finds. Grundy breaks free and starts to attack this Batman. He's got these chains with these giant balls at him, these swings toward Batman. A closer look at Grundy reaching toward Batman. And after Batman takes out Grundy, he still has to deal with a pissed off penguin with a rocket launcher. Not to mention Joker, Hugo Strange, and Rachel Ghoul. Now let's check him out. Next is some of their action figures. Starting off with some of their Solomon Grundy figures. And here's the moment we've all been waiting for. At least this is a moment I've been looking forward to getting to. Here's the McFarland DC Multiverse Arkham City Solomon Grundy. Next to the DC Direct version. My god, look at that height difference. 
He is almost twice as tall. This guy is more or less accurate to the game. These are both 7-inch scale figures. McFarlane really fucked up the size of this Grundy. My word. They could have at least made him an inch or so bigger being a Build-A-Figure. Come on, guys. I mean, just look at this. That DC Direct thing is a beauty. Talk about a mega figure. So I just measured him. The DC Direct figure is 13 inches tall. This McFarlane one is 8.2 inches tall. That is about a 5 inch difference. And it is a huge difference. Here's a closer look at the McFarlane head sculpt. And a closer look at the DC Direct head sculpt. They're both very nice head sculpts. But I'm going to lean more toward the DC Direct one. And yet another thing the DC Direct one does better is he has this action feature here. It's part of his chest. It can actually come out. Skin comes off. Nice detailing inside of here, as well as here. Exposing Grundy's heart, which is also removable. Very nice feature there. That's how Batman took him out of the game. And here he is, next to a Mattel, Arkham City, Solomon Grundy. This is intended for the 4-inch scale figures. He's pretty cool, as he stands about 6 inches tall. Then, next to the Mattel DC Universe Classics, build a figure Solomon Grundy. The Mattel figures are much older, much more primitive, and they're scaled at 6 inches versus McFarlane 7 inches. And look at this Build-A-Figure. It is way bigger than the McFarlane version. Come on, McFarlane. They could have made Grundy a little bigger, and they should have made him a lot bigger. Here he is with all of my DC Direct and DC Collectibles Solomon Grundy figures. And here he is next to my Mattel Solomon Grundy figures. The one I'm missing that I would like would be the Justice Unlimited Solomon Grundy. But he's quite pricey nowadays. And here's my entire collection of Solomon Grundy figures. Like I said, the only one that I really care to get that I'm missing would be the Justice League Unlimited version. But he's not really necessary. Now let's check him out. Next to some other McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here he is, next to the Arkham City Batman. This Arkham City Batman is about the standard size of a McFarlane DC Multiverse figure. Grundy is just not big enough compared to them. And here he is, with the entire Arkham City wave. Penguin, Ra's al Ghul, Batman and Catwoman, collective build Solomon Grundy. These are all the figures they've made specifically from Arkham City, but there is an infected Joker coming out in the near future. Then, here's Grundy, next to all the different Arkham Asylum figures McFarlane has made. Killer Croc, Batman, and the Joker. Here's Grundy, next to the Arkham Origins figures they made. They've only done Deathstroke. And here, next to the Arkham Knight figures, Batman, Arkham Knight, Scarecrow and Red Hood. Looking forward to the standard versions of Scarecrow and Red Hood coming real soon. Here's Grundy, next to McFarlane's entire Injustice 2 collection. Most of the figures are from the video game. A couple are from the comic. And here he is. Next to McFarlane's Gotham Knights figures. Gotham Knights is a DC video game that exists outside the Arkham franchise, just like Injustice 2 did. Now let's check him out. Next to some other McFarlane collect a build or build a figures. Here's the first build a figure they made. This was Bane from Last Night on Earth. Even Bane here is a little bit taller than Grundy, and his overall body mass is way bigger. And here he is, next to the Dark Knight's Metal, Merciless. After Merciless, they released a Build-A-Figure King Shark from The Suicide Squad. And here he is, next to the Death Metal Dark Father figure. These guys are just about the same height. Dark Father is probably the smallest Build-A-Figure they've made, but Grundy is a close second. And now, here's Grundy next to the Target exclusive Batman Beyond Future Send Joker Batman Robot. And here's Grundy next to the Batman The Dark Knight Returns. Collect to build a horse. Then, here's Grundy next to the Justice League Endless Winter. Collect to build Frost King. Here's Grundy with the Blackest Knight. Build a figure Atrocitus. And finally, here's Grundy next to three of the four parts of the Target exclusive Crime Syndicate Star of the Conqueror. Now, the next build a figure coming out is the Speed Metal, the Batman Who Laughs. I was really hoping I'd have that guy in time for this video, 
but it looks like they're going to deliver tomorrow. Here are all of the different McFarland DC Multiverse collective build of figures they've made so far. Grundy and Darkfather are the shortest of them, and Grundy should be one of the largest. And here's Grundy, next to several different McFarland mega figures. Swamp Thing and Titan Joker are two of the biggest figures in the entire multiverse line. Now, I've seen a lot of people online say, Ah, oh, Grundy should have been a mega figure. He would have been bigger then. I think that's kind of a dumb comment. Mega figures come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. Titan Joker, one of the tallest ones. Clayface is not that much taller than Grundy, although his body mass is quite a bit bigger. Grundy is smaller than the majority of the build of figures. So him simply being a Build-A-Figure, not a Mega-Figure, is that why he's so small? It's a decision McFarlane made for whatever reason. He could have been quite a bit bigger, like Bane or Atrocitus. In my opinion, any of these Mega-Figures could have been included as a Build-A-Figure pretty easily. Now let's check him out, next to some other recently released McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. Here he is, next to my most recent acquisitions. These are the Target exclusive variations of the Justice League Endless Winter Wonder Woman, the Changing the Guard, Kyle Rayner Green Lantern, the Black Adam with Throne, and the Defiance Deathstroke. I got these guys at Target today. Here's Solomon Grundy, next to the most recent Page Puncher wave. This is the third wave, a Flash themed wave. We've got Adam, Flash, Gorilla Grodd, Captain Cold, and Heat Wave. And here he is with the second wave of page punchers. These are from Injustice 2, Batman and Green Arrow. Then, with the first wave of page punchers, this is a Black Adam wave. We've got Batman, Black Adam, Superman, and Constantine. Still trying to get the black and white version of Black Adam. That's a Walmart exclusive, and it claims it's in stock on their website, but my order is delayed and stuck. Here's Grundy, next to the two most recent mega figures, at least before Gorilla Grodd. This is Bane and Necron. And here he is, next to the McFarlane Toy Store exclusive, Hush Shootman, and the Tart exclusive, 30th Anniversary Batman the Animated Series Batman. Then, next to the Walmart exclusive, gold label versions of the Rebirth of Shazam, Speed Metal Dark Flash, Nightfall, Azrael and Batman Armor, and Parallax Hal Jordan. And now, next to the Rebirth Deathstroke and the Court of Owls Talon, here's Grundy. Next to the Speeding Bullets Batman, and the Dark Knight's Metal Batrocitus. And here he is, next to the Blue Beetle and Booster Gold 2-pack. Then, with the Infinite Frontier Scarecrow, the Future State Superman, and the New 52 Static. And now, next to the Black Adam Movie Wave, which I believe is now finally complete. And finally, here he is, next to the Blackest Night Wave, Collector Build Atrocitus. Three of these Blackest Night figures are zombies. That's something they have in common with Grundy. Now let's check him out. Next is my action figures from different various companies to see how he fits in both scale and style wise in case you want to know which lines you can mix him with. Since he's a McFarland figure, they're typically the 7 inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the large action figure lines I collect and work my smaller. But first, let's check him out with some of his McFarland toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all for McFarland toys all 7 inch scale. Then, with some more McFarlane toys, these are from different various video game properties. And now, with some Jack specific wrestling figures. And here he is, next to some DST or Diamond Select toys. Then, next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here, standing with some NECA figures. Then, with some Mattel wrestling figures. And now, with some Jazzwares AEW wrestlers. And here he is, Next to some Mezco 112 collective figures. Then, with some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here he is, with some Mafex figures. Then, with some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here he is, with some SH Figure Arts action figures. And finally, next to some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. Overall, Granny is a good looking figure. Sculpt and paint job are excellent. Articulation. It's a little bit limited. Accessories are non-existent. My biggest gripe with this guy is the scale. He is grossly underscaled. If they were going to make this guy this small, 
They should have just done a different character altogether. Now don't misunderstand me. If you're going to use him for a comic version of Grundy, he'll work pretty good in your collection. But that's just simply not what he is. Like I said, the figure looks very good. Detail on the face, the jacket, the skin, it's all really good. And if you think the actual value of the figure is $19.99, buy the entire wave, it's $100, bucks, you get five figures, breaks it down to 20 bucks a piece. From that point of view, he's a great figure and a great value, but I'm still just grossly disappointed with the size. He's almost the smallest build figure in the entire line, and that's inexcusable, as this one should be larger than all the figures. I mean, look at him next to Titan Joker. Look at him next to Killer Croc. Those are figures from the Arkham franchise. And he really should be bigger than them, but the figure is way smaller. Like I said, take the price into consideration. Take the fact that some people want a smaller Grundy for their comic collection. But it's just not what he is. If I were to rate this figure, I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10. And I almost feel like dropping it to a 5.5. But he does look very nice. Still, definitely a disappointment. The DC Direct 1 blows this guy out of the water in pretty much every way, shape, and form. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say with the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. And I will talk to you guys real soon.